Hey folks, come on here, come on, yeah. How are we all? An unboxing, or rather an unpacking. A little unpacking for us to do. And very appropriately, appropriately, I'm gonna use my ski and do. As you all know, your ski and do lives down your boot, lives down your wee booty there. Not your, not, not your booty there, but your booty there. Now, I have not unpacked one of these before, um, because, well, I just haven't. Um, usually it's masks and props and all sorts of shit. Uh, look, do forgive this ridiculous thing, it's absolutely lashing down out there. Fucking heavens are fucking open, and it's... Roxy the Wonder Dog has appeared. You may see ears fluttering about down here. Um, but, I've got 49 kilts. I'm going to have to count them again, you know, because I think this could be kilt number 50, or it could be kilt number 49. I don't remember. I'm going to have to work that one out. Um, but this, in here, today, is a handmade kilt, a lovely handmade kilt, and it better be what I ordered. <laughs> which is the, uh, it's the dress MacDonald. I have the MacDonald, I have uh, an ancient MacDonald as well, but I also now, hopefully, I have the dress MacDonald. Now, I've only seen a couple of pictures of this, and from what I gathered, it was a kind of light colored, shot through with, with red and blue, and uh, looked nice. It didn't look massively dissimilar in its color, to um, the dress Stuart, in fact. But could be completely wrong. This is, ha this is handmade, it took him a week to make this and get it to me. And uh, yeah, and it's a damn good price too. So, there is shuffling about taking place behind me because Roxy the Wonder Dog, who you can't quite see, is actually rummaging about in their empty bowls. In other words, saying, Dad, Dad, I'm hungry, feed me, feed me now. Even though this dog, eats pretty much 24 7. You take her out for a walk and she will prize a two-year-old chewy off the pavement. She will eat a cigarette stub. <sighs> Don't you ever feed that, kilt, that dog kilt man? Uh, yeah, yeah, frequently. Anyway, now let's be careful not to slit the bloody kilt. That would be a really stupid thing to do. And those of you who've seen my previous videos of unboxings will know <laughs> when I unboxed one of the American Werewolf in London masks I managed to slit my wee pinky open as well <laughs> quite badly on camera Roxy, leave the ball alone So Okay, I've just seen inside this packaging and uh, my initial thoughts about what this, the colour was going to be on this are wrong which just goes to show you how deceptive little pictures can be when they show you a little a little tiny snippet of tartan and you think you get the overall picture well you, you don't you don't so let's oh it is nice though and straight away i can see where the mcdonald comes into it because here you go folks here you go Lovely. Now, let's get this out. Let's get this out and show you. You've probably seen me wearing the McDonald's before. The dog is now chewing up <laughs> all the baggage. Oh, this is... Folks, this is gorgeous. I'm trying to show you. What you see here, the plaid here, the tartan here, that is your, jet, that is your normal, your normal McDonald's. So imagine the kilt of all of that. And what they've done through this the dress one, they've shot through with this white and red. And it adds a lovely contrast. Oh, my word. Yeah. Hey. Can you see? Can you see this? Roxy, Roxy, can you see? Can you, can you see Roxy? Roxy the Wonder Dog. Rocco, Rocco, come here. She'll never, she'll never perform on camera for me. But yeah, 
This is the dress McDonald's. As I've discussed many times, uh, the clans will often have many variations of a tartan. You'll have your ancient, you'll have your traditional, you'll have your modern, you'll have your hunting, you'll have your dress. Sometimes there's, there's a muted version, a weathered version. There's all sorts of different versions, and isn't there, there's pretty much no limit to what you can do. I have all the Stuart uh, tartans, to my knowledge, including the, the, the glorious Stuart Black, but no matter what tartan I wear, no matter what tartan, Roxy, <laughs> I will always have these sashes, which are the Royal Stuart, and that, for me, always shows to well, myself and to everybody around who knows, and anyone who wants to ask me, what do, that's a different tartan than what you're wearing, what does that mean? And you go, well, that's shown my allegiance to the true King of Scotland, Jimmy Stuart. <laughs> because the Royal Stuart is one of the most iconic of uh, tartans. That and the Wallace, the Wallace red, Don't, not the Wallace that you see Mel Gibson wearing in uh, Braveheart, music of which is playing here now, because that is not uh, a Wallace tartan. It's not, it just isn't. It's, it's, it's the Braveheart tartan created for the movie. It is not a genuine tartan. So, it is nice though. It kind of looks like the uh, the Brun, and I, I have the Brun, and that's, that's a lovely tartan too, very rustic and earthy, and that's what the, the Wallace, the Braveheart tartan in the movie does look like. But, um, people are going, why did you wear that then? Why? It's showing my allegiance to the true King of Scotland. And it adds a lovely contrast to whatever else you're wearing. Um, I often wear the over-shoulder plaid fly, which you've seen in other videos, and uh, that's got to match. You know, you, you don't have, you can't wear, you know, multiple tartans. You know, that would be ridiculous. It just look like a fucking, you know, a rainbow, you know, just a rainbow explosion of colour. And it'd just be like a, tune that channel in. It's getting all fucking interference. If you're going, if you're going, uh, being colourblind looking at it. So you've got to try to, you know, keep things as they should be. As I've said, the reason why I don't wear like my own tartan is because there is no my own tartan for Macaninis. There isn't. But we are very, very closely associated with the Mackenzies. So I wear, do forgive me if I repeat myself, because I've said it all before, I wear a lot of Mackenzie stuff. So the ancient, the ancient Mackenzie is my favorite tartan of all time. And I was lucky to get that because I have never seen one come up again at that kind of price that I managed to pay for that. Beautiful handmade kilt. And I do wear it, uh, not, I don't wear it a lot because it, it means a lot to me. So I don't want to, I go out and roll around out like a fool with a whiskey going down my neck. And at the time of this recording, it's Thursday, tomorrow being Freedom Friday when Kilt Man. Every Friday is a full moon for Kilt Man. Kilt Man goes wild and has a great time. But uh, especially, you know, around town in Liverpool and, you know, and wherever else he finds himself. And uh, there's a few of us going out tomorrow. So it would be foolhardy of me to put on my favourite tartan because, hey, stuff happens and I don't want to get it ruined. But I do, that is my favourite of all time. And as I say, I was lucky to get it at the price I did because I have not seen that tartan crop up anywhere else since without going out and getting it genuinely handmade, which this one, uh, again, the offer was good and I thought, no, I'm going to do it. That, that's, that's a handmade kilt, proper handmade kilt. Um, they aren't all handmade kilts. Some are definitely machine made and they're uh, tailored. <laughs> but, you know, they're all great. They're all phenomenal bits of kit. What you never see me wear is what they call tactical kilts. And you've probably seen these things. These are like, they're, they're, they're proper kilts, except that they've got pockets in them. So if you go out to work, you're a handyman, you're a builder, you can put your screwdriver and your monkey wrench and whatever tools you need to use in your big fat pockets on your kilt. There's also, and they come in a range of camouflage patterns too, including my favorite tiger stripe, you know? So you could go to war in one of these kilts, put your, your, your magazines, you know, your bullet magazines down the pockets of your kilt. But as cool as these things look, I don't want to wear a kilt like that. I like my kilts to be traditional, to be as ancient as uh, the Scottish kilts are. And believe you me, they're not ancient, you know. Uh, 
it's what, 16th century is when they're the kilts came in. Roxy is over there. Roxy, come here. Come here and say hello. Come here. Come here, girl. Come here and say hello to the lovely folks out here. Come on. Yes, yes. Lickage, mucho lickage. You love your daddy, don't you? You love your daddy. Huskies, mate. Huskies. But they're a law unto their fucking selves. I've always had German Shepherds, and they are the most wonderful animals uh, I've ever encountered. Loyal, uh, obedient, so easily trained, and so loving of being trained. Huskies, Huskies, German Shepherds, Wolves, they, they all look the same. They've got the noble ears, that proud snout, you know, they look noble and regal, but also downright fucking ferocious too. Proper dogs, proper big fuck off animals, like, you know, and they got the, the little curved tail, yeah, they, got, they have the same profile and the same body type. They look amazing. If I can't have a wolf, I'll have the next best thing, a German Shepherd. Now, this particular time, after the last German Shepherd sadly passed away, in my arms as well, in my arms just over there, on New Year's Eve as well, years ago, years ago, and uh, that was a traumatic occasion for me because she was the favourite being that I've ever encountered in my life, and uh, she's buried out the back, and uh, I still you know, miss that dog. But a few years went by and the kids and Mrs. Kiltman said, oh, can we get another dog now? And How about we get a husky? What are like huskies? And I thought, no German Shepherd. Um, okay, okay, we'll get a husky. Well, they look the same, don't they? They look great. They're proper big, you know, rugged, wild animals. Yes, look like a wolf. Let's have one. So we got one. And uh, Jesus Christ, they are a different breed entirely. If I'd done maybe one, two, three minutes, three minutes of research, the day that we bought her, because the, the, the day that we decided to get a husky, she appeared online. Only 11 weeks old, and uh, full, pure Siberian husky. And it was just a, a family out in Kirkdale, a young family, only had a little one-year-old son, and they got this dog, this gorgeous dog, this gorgeous puppy, that was just so boisterous and frisky and in their faces. They knocked the little child over just by playing around, and they they knew she wasn't a danger, but they thought, how big do these things get? Uh, maybe we made the wrong choice. Maybe we should have gone for a little sausage dog, or a, a corgi, or a cockapoo, or whatever the hell those things are, a little rat dog. So they put up for sale that day, coinciding with us deciding that, you know, yeah, let's get a husky. Saw her face, thought, yeah, she's lovely. Went out, bought her that day, brought her back, and you know my heart broke you know pretty much straight away with it because she is one of the most adorable creatures <laughs> let's get off this bit this is james horner's score to <laughs> to braveheart but we can do without some begorian chanting can't we and uh brought her back and she was just tremendous but you cannot train a husky yes i know people go, well actually kiltman i'm a dog trainer i'm a dog whisperer and i train huskies all the time and they are fantastic they're so easy to train and so loyal and obedient everything you said about the german shepherd yeah well i know lots of people with huskies i know lots of people with malamutes as well around here there's lots and lots and lots of them roxy our roxy there who is now trundled off uh, is part of the little um sled dogs association so she meets up with all their other husky types and they parade around and they have a great time, a great old time. But everyone says, yeah, they are not bad dogs, they are not aggressive. What they are is mischievous and they know their own minds. They're exceptionally intelligent. So where does a German Shepherd wants to go like, well, I'm intelligent too, but I want to please you. So I will, I will do what you say. Because I know I get loads of rewards and I know that it makes you proud. And if it makes you proud, it makes me feel great. And that's wonderful. The husky goes, hang on a minute. You're, you want me to do this? You want me to run up and down there? You want me to go and retrieve that and bring it back? You want me to sit, roll over that? that give me your put Fuck off. What's in it for me? Yeah, I might get a few strokes and a bit of petting and I'll get some treats. But hey, why am I doing it? Why am I really doing it? 
to make you feel better? I don't really care what you think. I care what I think, what I feel. So um, it took me a while to kind of get the terms with that, that this dog will do whatever she wants. She'll do some things to please you, but most of all, she does what pleases her. And I have found that what pleases her kind of makes me laugh and makes me happy as well. So, hey, why meddle with nature? These don't really want to be taught. They can do it, but they choose not to do it. Now, I'm the biggest fucking rebel that's ever lived, so I have to recognise a similar trait in these dogs. And, uh, you know, I love it to bits. I just wish, I just wish, when I first started doing these YouTube videos, the dog was always here. She's always in the, in the frame, always getting involved. Now I try to bring her in, and she's just fucking, well, as you saw there, she's out of shot, won't get in the shot, and then the minute I do get a shot of it, she scurries off. You see? You see what I mean? Rebellious, mischievous. They're mischievous without being downright naughty, you know, and I, I, I kind of like. But, folks, the dress MacDonald. Hope you all like it. I am going to, I'm sorry, I wasn't gonna strip off and put this on to, to show you. you know, with the mask, I put the mask on. But to put this on, I'd have to take the other kilt off. Ooh. I think YouTube might have a few problems with that. But um, I'm going to wear this tomorrow. Tomorrow, I say, big day. Well, you know, lots of this going on. And much merriment and frivolity will be had, as usual. So I will put this on tomorrow. I'll go to work. I've got to go to work first. Uh, and then the gates open. The stampede takes place, and the rebels and the party animals surge out into town. Where hey, where hey, we say, charge to the bar. Hey, where's the wild women at? <laughs> oh God. Hey, and I'm not getting any younger. But what does it matter? You are what you are. You is what you is. And if what you is, is wild, same with the Huskies. If they're meant to be like that, don't meddle with nature. If you're meant to be a wild animal, don't allow yourself to be tamed and controlled. Kilman has spoken. If you recognize any of those traits in yourself, I won't say encourage them, but I will say don't care of them either. If they need to come to the fore and vent, then let them, let them. Give in, give in to your bestial side, your bestial side. Become the beast you should be. <laughs> I'm talking a bit crap again. Um, this was just to open this up. Um, come home from work and wow, it was there. Um, I am itching to put this on. I, lo I love them, I just love. Love my, love my tartan. I love my kilts. I'm going to put this over here. And uh, I'm sure there's other stuff on the way. I've always got stuff. I'm always buying stuff. I'm always ordering things. I think that's great. You know, you pre order things and then you forget about them. You know, like movies or fucking CDs or whatever. Whatever. Masks, particularly. Pre order them. And then weeks go by and next thing you've got packages coming. You're like, what the hell's this? Wow, what's this? You've forgotten you ordered it. Slit it open. <gasps> it's always the excitement. That kind of thing keeps you young. That. And coconut oil. I would also swear by coconut oil. I'm 60 this year. Not quite. Hey, but not too far off it though. Worryingly so. <laughs> right, folks, anyway. As Braveheart, James Horner's majestic, beautiful, tragic, elegiac score croons across the highlands behind you. And it is lovely, isn't it? Um, I'm going to let you think on about the animal side. <laughs> and uh, I'll be back very shortly with some proper reviews. Yeah. 
I've had a bit of a weird old time of videos lately. They've been all over this show. I did one about Halloween 2018, and I do apologise. I think I swore more in that video than in anything else. You know, and uh, but what? Hey, I'm passionate about these things, and sometimes you know just other descriptive words won't do. In fact, here's one for you. And, and I may have mentioned this before, but I love this anecdote. You know, Trump, Trump and his wall, bisecting, you know, America, keep out the Mexicans and all this, like. And he said, you know, I want the Mexicans to pay for this as well. Do you remember, did you ever see, I don't know the guy's name, but he's the president of Mexico. Whether he still is, I don't know, I don't know. And uh, they said to him, like, uh, you know, apparently you, know, you guys are, are gonna pay for this wall. And he sat there on live TV. You can get it on YouTube, it's there, it's there. And he goes, we are not going to pay for no fucking wall. <laughs> he just, just says it. It's just, it's, he's the president of a fucking country. Just comes out with it. And, but you can see it in his eyes, his brain's ticking over going like, hang on. We're not going to pay for no, uh, no, there's no other word for it. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to go in there and dive in with the old fucking wall. Hats off, hats off. Sombrero's off, sombrero's off. Batches, we don't need no stinking batches and we don't need no fucking wall. <laughs> hey, tangents, kill man is the king of tangents. I go off all over the place. I have tributaries and diversions and detours. And people say, where are you going? Like I know. Don't bother asking me. I haven't got a clue where I'm going with half, half the drivel I come out with. So, on a day when the dress MacDonald arrived, on a day when the husky absolutely shredded, I've never seen, I've never seen wreckage quite like it. There was two bags there, three including the polythene one that the kilt was wrapped in, and there is about once, there's 16,023 shreds of material across the kitchen floor. 24, sorry, 24. Uh, she's good at what she does. She's a shredder. Folks, I've rambled on for far too long now. Ski and do. Genuine. Antler. Hilt. A lot of these, a lot of these that you get, that they're, um, they're fake, um, so that there's no blade. Basically, that that you, you buy it and it's that. That is a single unit. There is no blade. It's just a sheath and a hilt. You put that down. You you reboot, or you <laughs> or you you get your ghillie shoe and uh, your sock. I mean your sock. Sorry, not your, not your ghillie shoe. That'd be very uncomfortable. Um, and you've got your your sock flashes on. Your sock flashes match your tartan. I've got lots of them, I don't really wear them these days. But, and this is the thing, knife crime, knife culture in the UK is through the roof, if the media is to be believed. People are getting sliced and diced about every every 10 seconds someone's been cut up, somebody. Um, so going out with one of these down your boot, it is a bit controversial, shall we say. And yet, it's legal, folks, it's legal. Nothing to do with that blade size. It's a cultural piece of kit. I have been out in town. I've been to pubs and nightclubs with that down my boots. Very obviously on show. And I've said to Dorman, look, you know, because I don't want to cause trouble. I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't want to cause trouble. Uh, I'm a fun loving guy. I don't want to offend or you know, scare anyone. But, so I say to Dorman, look, uh, and I usually, if I ever wear that, I've got the sporran on as well. And I've usually got the Argyle, you know, jacket and the waistcoat. It's never just that. And I say, look, you know, I've, I've got a ski and do down your boots. And literally, touching wood, every single time I've done that, I've gone, fine, you're fine, mate, you're fine. And I said, well, you know, somebody might come over and complain. Somebody might. I said, well, if they do, you know, we'll deal with it. Don't worry about it. So you're allowed to wear it. Uh, 
I also uh, was talking about a Scottish policeman on the train going to town one time at Christmas do, and I was in my full regalia, sparring, you know, the, the works, over the shoulder plough fly, big ruby brooch, this, the armour boot. And I said to him, hey, he actually come over. I took my earphones out, and he was Scottish. <laughs> he said, oh, look, you're good there. And I went to well, look, you know, I'm going to town uh, Christmas do, and I said, I've got the ski and do. He goes, hey, I'd be fucking annoyed if you weren't wearing that fucking ski and do. You know, it's, it's totally legal. You can do whatever you want with that fucking ski and do. It's part of your fucking heritage. Don't you forget it. So, I said, when I get stopped, no, you won't get stopped. And if, if you do get stopped, you fucking tell them to call me. <laughs> so, Angus, Angus Muck Spreading, my name is. <laughs> but folks, hey, don't go out wearing knives. I do not encourage knife culture. Now, says the guy with all the Rambo knives and the fucking million swords and axes. But I don't even walk the streets with them. I don't even have the claymore down my fucking back. Right, that'll do. That'll do. Folks, take it easy. Hope you've enjoyed this <gasps> ridiculous conversation. This wide-ranging conversation. Animals, culture, kilts. Get it all. Get it all. And uh, have fun, y'all. And uh, please, you know, the Kilted Army's growing uh, a lot. And I, I can't say you know, too much how much I appreciate people whose continued support is there. And uh, I just love it. I just love it. And uh, oh, Maria. Maria, today. Hey, Maria. God love you, girl. God love you. You joined up as well. <laughs> you may, you may live to regret it, but no. Yeah, brilliant. I made up, made up. Um, there's going to be a few guest appearances in, in some subsequent videos. Cristiano Dior, you're out there. You're waiting to have a big matter with Kiltman on camera. Uh, God knows what we're going to discuss. God knows how much we're going to drink. <laughs> But it's all part of it. It's all part of this, this meteoric, you know, rise to Celtic glory across the globe. The army must, must grow. Together, we're invincible and we can make positive changes, I hope. <laughs> Folks, hey, I love you all. Please, take it easy. Be safe, be happy. Keep it Celtic, keep it kilted. Let's have one last little look at this. Is it not gorgeous? Is it not gorgeous? Lovely contrast to it. And you can clearly see, I can, I can now clearly see the original MacDonald shot through with this whole new sort of dressy, you know, element. So as I say, be safe, be happy, have fun. And I'm going to see you all. <gasps> Ooh, yeah, yeah.